Okay, we have your tail another integral from the MIT integration B 2011. This was problem 21. We have the integral from zero to six of the square root of six X minus X squared DX. Okay, now this is a problem I actually just did recently, but I did it with trig substitution and I wanted to do this a different way. So what I'm gonna do is we'll start with something similar. I'm just gonna take this six X minus X squared and try to complete the square on that. And I'm gonna factor a minus out just because I like to have the X squared in front for some reason. And then from here, when I complete the square, I'm gonna take this six and divide by two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have x minus three, and then when we square that, we're gonna get x squared minus six x, but then we're gonna have a plus nine. So I'm just gonna subtract off with minus nine. And then if we distribute this minus sign and we put it back under the square root, we're gonna end up with nine minus x minus three squared. So what I did last time was I put this back into the integral and then did trig substitution with this. But this time we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna set this expression to y and keep working with this. And then I'm gonna square both sides. On the right side, we're gonna have nine minus x minus three squared. And then I can add this term, the x minus three squared on both sides. And we're gonna end up with x minus three squared plus y squared equals nine. And then at this point, what we wanna notice is this is in the form for the equation of a circle. Okay, now we have our equation for the circle down here to the left. And with this, we have, I think, everything we need. So comparing our equation to the equation of the circle, like on the x here, we have this point h, which is gonna be three. Now for our k value, we just have y squared here, so we can do our k, our k point is gonna be zero. And then we can write nine as three squared. So our r value or our radius is gonna be just three. So we're saying for the center point of this circle, that center point is gonna be a three and zero, so we can write our point like that. And so let me just graph that really quick. Okay, so now we've got my weak attempt at drawing a circle over here on the right. And again, we have our center point here at three, zero. And then a couple important things to notice. Now, we need to go back and look at our bounds on our integral, because that's important. We're gonna want the area under this curve, but we still have to observe the bounds. So because our bounds are zero and six, that's nice, because then we're just looking for the area of the circle. If like, say the upper bound was five, then we'd have like a more complicated area to calculate. And then before we calculate this, one other thing I wanna notice, now if we go back to our original problem, so just notice in our original integral, we have a square root here. So this means that everything here is gonna be positive. So our y values are gonna be positive. And so that means when we calculate this area, we only want the positive area above the x-axis. And so at this point, this is gonna be really easy because we know the area of a circle, the equation for that is gonna be pi r squared. We know our r value. So the area of the whole circle is gonna be r squared or nine times pi. So since we only want the semicircle, we want the area above the x-axis, the area is gonna be just half of this. So our final solution is gonna be just nine pi over two. Okay, so that's it. It's just something to look out for once in a while that sometimes you can do the integral just from the area without even integrating. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.